Well, Large Marge, it's time to say goodbye to Nebraska and hello, why? Oming. Welcome everyone, Adam. The Woo here. It's my second channel, daily vlog channel. It's the daily. The terrain is slowly changing. Parts are flat, just like we've seen the last few states. But then others are big chunks of rock. One thing you'll notice a lot of out here are these randomly, sporadically placed snow fences. This one in particular has trees planted on the opposite side of it. And you'll also see it's not a complete wall of wood. There are slats in it to let the air through because they don't want the snow to stockpile. They just want it to be peppered through the air and laid gently here as it approaches the thoroughfare. These hay bales are placed in spots where animals do not normally roam. Now I know sometimes they lay hay down when they're trying to plant grass seed, but as you can see, there's, there's plenty of grass on the side of the road. So why would these hay bales be on this side of the fence? Pump, 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 pump. Coffee in a bottle today, well, a plastic bottle. Whoa, 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 whoa! Has this guy been following me? Don't try to disguise yourself. I'd rec I recognize you from the other day. I do like that hat and sweet handkerchief though. But stop, stop, stop following me, please. I pick myself up the state magnet in the shape of a bison before entering I-80. This is the first interstate I've been on in the last week or so. It looks as if most of the wind turbines are operational. There's one or two in there that are turned off, but the majority of them are spinning around. Is there some sort of wild beast trying to escape from underneath that tarp? That, that van's carrying some sort of wild creature. This decaying wooden sign states 1892 is when that schoolhouse was built. But what's next to it is even more fascinating. This is the original top of the 1917 State Capitol building. In 1999, they removed it and left it here. It has been given the nickname Dome on the Range and is completely surrounded by shards of broken glass. Just a little peek inside. It's amazing that for over 80 years, this served Wyoming well. You've done your duty. Now you can just sit here in this field. And it looks as if the door is open. Hello? Oh! Oh my gosh! This mannequin thing startled the heck out of me. With a stern warning that people who take and break things from here will wish they hadn't. Yeah, no kidding, you're holding a, you're holding a freaking meat cleaver. Just giving it a little mood music. If you grew up in the spare the rod, spoil the child generation, then you know exactly what the Board of Education was used for. There's some chalk down here. People have signed the blackboard. If for some reason you stumble upon this amazing place, walk inside and sign your name next to mine. I have heard that when indoor plumbing became a thing and bathrooms moved indoors, that those that first experienced it we're wondering why anyone would want to stink their house up. True story, I've heard that. Drove down the road just a bit, a few miles, and starting to get rained on just ever so gently. But that's okay, because it's not going to stop me from checking out the self-proclaimed smallest town in America. 
Buford, population one. Obviously, there's not very much here. The rumor is the town itself is owned by a very rich man from Vietnam who opened this convenience store up on the site. Pretty cool mural on the wall and they have their own merchandise. Coffee mugs, hats, and t-shirts. The employee at the register inside, he's the only one that lives here. Anywhere here, he's the, he's the only resident. Got myself another magnet. He was saying that the owner who lives out of the country might be closing the store in September. It's a good thing I got this. This might be a collector's item. And I got some snacks, corn nuts again, and I love these. I might be the only person on earth that likes these, but oh, so good. Up the freeway a bit, something pretty interesting and unusual. So unusual, in fact, they have created this little off-ramp so the tourists can see it. Say hello to the tree in the rock. Yes, it's actually growing inside of a rock. As the story goes, there used to be a railroad that went through here and they rerouted the tracks when they first discovered the tree. And as they continue to pass by, they pull the train over and water it. And it's been here ever since. Normally you see roots like this on the ground where I'm currently standing. But if you make your way up the side of this boulder, the roots go directly inside. That is, that is pretty weird. You might be wondering why I got off the pavement and now I'm driving down this dirt road, kicking up sand every which way. It's because I'm heading towards that, a monument in the shape of a pyramid. This thing is massive, just to give you perspective. Look at the gentleman on the far right down here talking on his cell phone. This sucker's big. Each one of those boulders weighs 20 tons, and that's the unfinished product before they moved them into the position of what you see now. It's amazing what can be found basically in the middle of nowhere. Incredible. Continue down the freeway a bit, and I have stopped off at this rest area, which is home of old Honest Abe Lincoln himself in huge bronze noggin form. Got it all fixed up nice in here. Got some animals behind the glass. Oh, there's a bird chirping up there. Do not even attempt to have a staring contest with this guy, because he will win. He will not blink. Yeah, he will not blink. If you look closely, I'm right, I'm right in there somewhere. The inscription on this weather-worn rock is very hard to make out, so they have replaced it with this newer template that says, Telephone Canyon, first conversation over this line was held here in 1882. Between Bill Nye? What? Imagine what it was like when they were igniting these sticks of dynamite to carve this pathway through the mountain. Probably was pretty loud ricocheting off the sides of the hills. Gas station is called the Gunslinger 66. And they have recreated, tucked away in the corner, the ghost town of Tumbleweed. Equipped with a stable, a bank, a saloon and a hotel. Howdy, partner. Now, is his name Pop, or is he someone's father? The store is closed, so if you need fuel, you have to do it with a credit card. Yeah. Making my way now onto the property of the former territorial prison. This is the type of vehicle you would have been locked up in and escorted directly into there. They've placed photos on the walls of some of the inmates. This guy's name was William Herbert, and he was right here inside the cell block. Most of the items are behind pieces of glass for good reason, because they are antiques. But this was the bathing area. They kept the men and women separate. This is where the ladies were behind bars. And down here are some of the tools of the trade of the infirmary. The dining hall also had a couple of pianos. And one interesting thing about this particular prison, no one was allowed to talk. There was no talking allowed here. The only exception being if you were out doing a job and working, 
If it was a safety concern, you were allowed to speak up. This is where the guards stood to get a little bit of a bird's eye on the prisoners. This panoramic photo shows what it used to look like. And you'll notice this place located right in front of the front door, basically. It's called the Ice House. The last prisoner that escaped from here was left unforgotten doing his job cutting the ice and he escaped. It had its share of notable prisoners, the most famous being Butch Cassidy himself. The outside guard tower right there. And if you walk through here, this is the backside, the courtyard behind the prison. One item that they created here on site were brooms. I never realized that brooms were made in a jail. I mean, obviously not every broom, but some of them. There's a few other buildings out here as well. They really have put a lot of work into this place. Some horse stalls. Whoa! Little remnant there. What's inside a cow? Do I do I want to know what's inside a cow? Ugh. Ugh. I didn't want to. I shouldn't have done that. This old stagecoach. I noticed around the opposite side is some stairs. You can go up in this thing. So this is what it's like to sit in one of these things. I've always seen them in westerns and TV shows and movies. Nice. Be a little more interesting if it was actually moving. Now I know you're not allowed to talk out here. Well, I'm talking, but you're, you weren't allowed to talk. But are you allowed to wear sunglasses? The real question is, would I give up my voice to keep my shades? A little mermaid status? That's a toughie. And speaking of, do you think anyone would recognize my RV? She was sporting these. It's a pretty good disguise, right? I mean, it worked for Clark Kent. Vlog over.